Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a title like this one. So to get started you need to create a new composition. I'm going to use the HDTV 1080 preset and the duration is going to be 5 seconds. So once you've created a new composition you can right click and create a new shape layer. I'm going to rename it right away to main shape so that I can stay organized. And then I'm going to add a rectangle and I'm also going to add a fill. Now the color of the fill is going to be white and the size of the rectangle is going to be 200. The next step is going to be selecting the rectangle path and pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it. And then we can move the position on the Y axis down. So we need to set it to 100. And right now we have the top part the middle part where they intersect and then the bottom part. So we only want this part where they're intersecting to be visible. So we need to add merge paths and we need to set the mode to intersect. And as you can see, only this part is visible. So we're going to animate the X value of the position. As you can see, this is what happens when I change it. So let me set a keyframe right here at the 10th frame with the value of zero. And then let's move the playhead back to the beginning and I'm going to set it to minus 200. So what that does is it changes the value from minus 200 to zero over 10 frames. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to select both of these keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. Then I'm going to open the graph editor Make sure that you're editing the speed graph if you're not seeing the same thing that I am. And then grab this second keyframe, click on the handle and drag it all the way to the left. So now this animation is going to start off quickly and then gradually slow down. And this is what it looks like. The next step is going to be creating the top part of the rectangle. So instead of having to do this all over again, we're just going to add a repeater and we're going to set the number of copies to two. So we have the original copy and the second copy. And now we need to open the transform options of the repeater and set the position back to zero and the rotation to 180 degrees. So as you can see, that's it. We've created both the bottom part and the top part of the rectangle. The next step is going to be clicking right here and adding a new null object. We're going to use it to animate the rotation. So I'm going to press R and I'm going to set a keyframe right here at the beginning and I'm going to set its value to 45 degrees. And right here at the 10th frame, I want to set the value to zero. So right now, if we preview this, you can see that nothing is happening. Only this um, red square, which is representing the null is moving. So we need to set the playhead right here um, to the second keyframe and then we need to parent the main shape to the null. So now if I preview this you can see that it's rotating. We're going to do the same thing with the keyframes that we did previously. Open the graph editor and then drag the, this handle all the way to the left and now we have an animation that looks like this. And the next step is going to be adding text. So I'm going to grab the type tool and I'm just going to type in box and then I'm going to move the text down and I'll use the arrow keys to precisely adjust it. That's going to be fine. And then we need to create a mat for the text layer. So we're going to duplicate the main shape and I'm going to rename it to text mat. And I'm going to place it on top of the text layer. And then I'm going to click on toggle switches and modes and I'm going to set the track mat of the text layer to alpha mat. And this mat right now is going to define the areas in which the text is going to be visible. But there's one problem. As you can see, the text is not rotating together with the rectangle. So let's move the playhead to the 10th frame, align it with those rotation keyframes that we've created earlier. I'm pressing U to show the keyframes. Um, and then parent the text to the null and right now this is what's happening. The text is rotating together with the rectangle. 
Now the final step is creating that slice. So let's create another shape layer. You can rename it to slice. And to be more precise, you can rename it to adjustment layer. And then we're going to add a rectangle and we're also going to add a fill. Now we don't need to change any transform options in the contents. We're just going to open the transform set of options and we're going to increase the scale and we're going to set the rotation to 30. So it needs to cover a certain part of the original rectangle which we want to be sliced. So let's set it like this. And then we're going to go to toggle switches and modes and we're going to click right here where it says adjustment layer and as you can see it's no longer visible. So let's go to the 25th frame and let's trim this layer so that it starts at the 25th frame and then let's create a scale keyframe but let's go to the keyframe and click on toggle hold keyframe. Now at one second we're going to increase the scale so that it covers the entire rectangle. So how to make that effect? Um, we're pretty much going to go to the effects and presets panel and search for an effect which is called transform. We're going to apply it to this new adjustment layer that we've made and we're going to set the scale to 95. That's just the subtle difference that we need to see this slice right here. And now if I preview this, as you can see, this is how it looks. So right now we're done, but there's one final step, which is adding the background. So because we have this adjustment layer, it's affecting each layer that is below it. So if I add a solid or a video or a picture, it's gonna cause some distortion and possibly some black edges. So we need to select all these layers and then pre-compose them. You can name the pre-comp whatever you want, hit okay. And right now inside of this composition, you can add a new solid or a video or an image or whatever you like. I'm just going to use a solid and I'm going to place it underneath of the pre-comp. And right now, if I preview this, you can see that we're done. That's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please check out my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.